Needless to say, I'm going to chime in here. Um, as far as the um, no to GMOs uh, campaign is concerned, so I want to um, perhaps point, uh, point uh, people to some background regarding all of this, and it doesn't just concern uh, genetically modified organisms. Uh, it, it, um, it, the picture is uh, actually uh, a little bit bigger. Rapid uh, developments in biotechnology during the last decade have enabled corporations and scientists to alter nature's handiwork for commercial profit. A major strategy for private exploitation in this area is to obtain the patent rights to an organism or its component parts. In these developments, uh, as these developments affect all of society, we need to decide whether any corporation, institution, or individual should have the right to private ownership of life. Patents were historically developed to ensure that inventors could share in the financial returns and benefits derived from the use of their inventions. With the development of the modern corporation, patent rights were already assigned, were always assigned to the company rather than an individual. This gives the patent holder a form of monopoly control for about 20 years uh, from the filing of the patent and creates a legal means of limiting competition. Private investors generally regard these monopolies as favorable to their interests, so in many industries, patents aid in the development of new products. For over 200 years, living organisms have been excluded from patent laws. Life forms were considered a product of nature and not a human invention. The non-patentable status of living organisms changed with the 1980 Supreme Court landmark decision. It was a case named Diamond versus Chakrabarty. The court decided in a narrow five, point, uh, five, point, uh, five to four decision, here's another five to four decision for you, that a strain of bacteria that had been modified by the insertion of new genes was patentable because it was not naturally occurring. The foreign genes gave the bacteria to the ability to break down hydrocarbons and its inventors had hoped it might be useful for cleaning up oil spills. Industrial societies have always permitted ownership of individual animals. However, until recently, no, co no corporation or institution or individual could own the rights to an entire strain or species of organisms, nor could they patent components of organisms such as cells, genes, and proteins. All of these are part of our global living heritage. The granting of patents on microorganisms and increased pressure from the biotechnology industries began a slippery slope uh, towards the patenting of more complex life forms. In 1988, a Harvard University biologist was granted a patent for a mouse that had been engineered for increased susceptibility to cancer. The Harvard uncle mouse, as it was called, was the first animal to be considered an invention by the U.S. Patent and Trademark Office. It established a precedent within patent pr procedures for patenting genetically modified animals. Although this research was intended to benefit human health, in other words, cancer research, the question remains about the ethics of patenting complete living beings. A most alarming aspect of patenting life is the patenting of human genes, cell lines, and tissues. Corporate patent attorneys have lobbied the patent office that these products of nature are patentable 
once they have been isolated to produce a form not found outside the laboratory. For example, in 1976, a leukemia patient named John Moore had surgery at the University of California to remove his cancerous spleen. The university was later gra granted a patent for a cell line called, Dr., uh, called Mo uh, removed from the spleen, which could then be used for producing valuable proteins. The long-term commercial value of the cell line was estimated at over $1 billion. Mr. Moore demanded the return of the cells and control over his body parts, but the California Supreme Court decided that he was not entitled to any of these rights. American farmers and consumers throughout the century have fought against the inclusion of food crops under the patent laws. Corporate control over plant varieties themselves have been regarded as contrary to the interests of the general population. Patenting plant life will also intensify the inequality between the developing and industrialized nations. The open exchange of seeds and plant material over the centuries has given the U.S. and Europe basically the advantage over less, lesser developed nations. <clears throat> In short, to sum it all up, patents on living organisms are morally objective are morally objectionable to many of us. Patenting organisms and their DNA promotes the concept that life is a commodity and the view that living beings are gene machines to be exploited for profit. I'll link to um, the rest of this article um, in the sidebar. You can look it up.